Seven years after its last installment, the Storm series is back with Storm Connections. This is the seventh Storm game released on consoles by CyberConnect2 and Bandai Namco, and the one that promises to bring the series into the modern age of fighting games, complete with regular updates including a season pass. But does Connections change the formula significantly to call itself a brand new game? Does it bring enough content to justify the $60 price tag, or is it just a promise for now? My name is Globku and this is my review for Naruto Cross Portal Ultimate Ninja Storm Connections. If you're a long-time fan of the Storm series and are looking for my quick take on this game, I think this is closer to Generations 2 than it is to Storm 5. That is to say, the game makes some huge and significant changes to its combat system, but content-wise you will find it somewhat lacking. That is despite the game boasting an impressive roster of over 130 characters and more stages than ever before. Thing is, those numbers might look slightly less impressive once you realize that out of all those characters only 10 of them are new to the series, and most stages are also returned from previous games. That said, everyone in the roster has received adjustments, which will impact every game mode the game has to offer. I currently have over 30 hours of playtime, all on PS5, where the game ran flawlessly at 4K 60fps, with the rare exceptions when too much was happening or whenever Rock Lee lends his grab and the game turns into the Spider-Verse for some reason. We're gonna start this review by looking at the gameplay in general, then dive into its game modes, talk about the online, and close it out with a final score. Let's go. The gameplay of Storm Connections should feel very familiar to those that played Storm 4. The base systems are all the same, but the game received so many adjustments that it does feel very fresh indeed. It would take me a full separate video to list them all, so we'll just talk about the most significant changes and how they affect the game itself. The first thing you will notice is that everyone has infinite combos now, what was once a bug is now a feature. Don't worry, you still have 4 substitutions and can call assists while getting comboed. In fact, these old school infinites are really not that strong anymore, because the game now has combo scaling. And as you start looking for other combo routes, you will discover that this game actually has combos now. Technically, combos aren't new to the Storm series, but this is the first time that it feels like the game was actually designed to have them. And that's thanks in large part to a lot of the jutsu that now work as combo extensions rather than combo enders. Some simply launch you into the air, allowing you to follow up for free, and others can be cancelled with a block or a chakra dash, so you can chase down an opponent and pick the combo back up again. And speaking of jutsu, every character now has two of them instead of just one. That second jutsu is what many characters had as their tilt back in Storm 4, but it being a jutsu now means you can cancel attacks into it and further expand your combo options. And not everyone got their tilt as their second jutsu, some characters got an awakening action instead, and others have a brand new jutsu that just wasn't in the game before. A second jutsu also means a second assist for every single character, which increases the number of viable team combinations and doubles the utility of a character as an assist. And because of this new combo system, Chakra Regen generation has been drastically increased, but defensively you also got a massive buff and can now counter-attack for free. But this counter does have some recovery and if you mistime it, you will be the one taking damage. Connections ends up being a faster paced game with bigger damage than its predecessor, but retains its core identity where neutral is king. Making sure your opponent runs out of substitutions before you do is more important than ever before because the damage potential is so much bigger. And there is one more change that I think is very significant here, and that is the addition of simple controls. Most of my time with Storm Connections has actually been playing with simple controls, both in single player as well as online. And I gotta say, after getting rid of my previous muscle memory, I really like them. With this control scheme, you can turn on every kind of assistance, so if you just mash the attack button, your character will actually chakra dash towards the opponent and start a combo, canceling with jutsu and even ultimate jutsu if they have the chakra. Basically, if you turn every assistance on, you literally mash circle to have the game be played for you. It is an ultra casual control scheme. But, if you use simple controls and turn all of that stuff off, I think it's actually viable even in a competitive setting. There are a few small things you can't do with simple controls, for instance, it's faster to charge chakra with classic controls, because the way you do it on simple is by standing idle. And that small difference is sometimes enough to not have enough chakra to continue the combo. But it does get you about 90% of the way there, and because it requires less button inputs to do most actions, my reaction time has actually improved drastically. I think the optimal way of playing will still be classic controls, but these don't really feel that simple once you turn the assistances off. They feel like a nice alternate control scheme that's aimed at new players in the Storm series, but not necessarily
necessarily aimed at beginners. You can definitely get good by playing with this scheme. Overall, Connections makes great changes to its core gameplay systems. CC2 also fixed a lot of bugs that were present in Storm 4. Didn't catch all of them, but caught a lot. And that's a really good sign that they're listening and willing to fix things this time around. That said, a lot of these changes feel like they could fit in an expansion pack or an update to Storm 4. And this is a brand new game costing $60, so let's see if the game justifies it with some game modes. The first mode the game greets you with is History Mode. This is, and I do not say this lightly, the worst game mode that CyberConnect 2 ever created. It's absolutely worthless. You go through the Naruto story from the first Storm game all the way through Storm 4 in what's basically a game mode of recycled encounters from the previous games. You watch a slideshow of anime screenshots, into battle, into more slideshow. Rinse and repeat. You get the occasional boss fight and cutscene, but all of them are taken straight out of the previous games. Here's a quick comparison with Storm 2 side by side, which I guess helps you see the difference in graphics, and I guess you can see they changed the button prompts, but other than that, it is the same exact fight, frame by frame. The one exception to this is that they added an Ashra vs Indra fight, since these two are now playable, but it's just a normal battle, unfortunately. And they remade the Shukaku fight from the first Storm, instead of just upgrading the graphics. If the whole history mode followed the example of this boss fight, maybe it would be better. Also, they made a cutscene for when you start this game mode and another one for when you finish it that seem incredibly low quality, like they were pre-rendered at 720p, which contrasts really poorly with the 4K graphics that the game has. And if you haven't played the previous Storm games, I think this mode strips a lot of the cool encounters and features that those games had, like the free roaming and the missions where you beat hordes of enemies. It's almost like the worst of both worlds. The one cool thing they did for this mode specifically is that since everyone now has a second jutsu that also applies applies to story-only characters, like these giants that you control. That's neat, but unfortunately it doesn't change the gameplay significantly. The whole thing took me about 3 hours to finish, though I did skip a lot of the slideshows, and another hour or so if you want to be a completionist, getting all the S ranks and bonus objectives, which I also did. A little extra thing they did was add reactions to the end of each encounter, as well as a question at the end of each chapter, and you can see how other players answered or reacted. This would be a neat feature if the rest of the game mode was good, like a cherry on top of a cake, but as it is, it holds very little value. Fortunately, the same cannot be said for the special story mode. With Boruto as the main protagonist, this is an original story that got the traditional CC2 treatment that you love to see in Naruto games. In-game dialogue, unique encounters and gorgeous cutscenes. Although some of these also seem pre-rendered for some reason, but not as bad as the ones in history mode. And I think overall, it's very good as far as filler goes. I think there's a very well-written character in Nanashi, and the villain, on the other hand, felt a bit more generic. This character Merz claims to have inherited the will of and wants to throw the world into the fifth Ninja World War. Somehow connected to this, there's a new VR game that's very popular amongst Boruto and friends, but they all feel very tired after playing it. And one day out on a mission, Team 7 finds a destroyed forest, and a nearby village claims it was destroyed by a Susano. All of this is connected and will make sense in the end. Sometimes they're connected in predictable ways, and sometimes in quite clever and creative ways, that also include some awesome plot twists and character reveals that fans will probably love. That's not to say the story is flawed, the mysterious Uchiha that's causing trouble is an overdone trope in my opinion, as well as the power to make characters evil, because designing new villains with complete movesets is expensive. But it does make for some cool boss encounters. It's not all unique set pieces though, even this game mode has its fair share of versus battles, especially inside the VR game where you can play as any ninja, and I won't spoil why, but during an entire chapter, reliving Naruto's memories becomes important, and you play some missions as Naruto, which would be fine if you didn't have a whole history mode that is dedicated to this. At least this time it's done from Boruto's perspective, which offers something different, but perhaps not different enough. There's also no free roaming this time around, which I'm sure will disappoint some fans, but I would say this mode is definitely worth it. It lasts for about 6 hours total, and the story definitely wants to make you cry, and I admit, I may have gotten a little teary-eyed at some point, so I guess it worked. Now, Storm usually has a few other offline game modes, and for the most part, everything is back with a few welcome additions. For the first time in the Storm series, there's a tutorial that teaches you how to play the game, and it's a really good one. In free battle, you'll find the usual survival, tournament, league battles, versus battle, and training. All of these have the features that you're used to from the previous games They were pretty much just ported over to this one. In fact, practice mode is better than ever simply because they added damage numbers now, which is definitely appreciated when practicing combos for a new character. You also have a menu that dedicated to the collection, which is where you'll find every little unlockable this game has. Most of it 
can simply be bought with in-game money that you earn while doing everything, but you might also unlock some of these by completing optional objectives in story modes, and it is impressive the amount of stuff that exists here. Outside this menu, you'll also find a list of character levels that goes up the more you play them, and each one of them can unlock more customization options, and a really impressive encyclopedia with information for every single character, jutsu, and events that happened in Naruto. I'm not kidding, this encyclopedia is seriously impressive, I'm just not sure if the player base is necessarily looking for something like this in Storm Connections. Many of you are here for the online though, after all, that's all that's left to do once you have completed the single player modes. And the first impression for online isn't great. You can queue for ranked or casual matches, finding random opponents out there in the world, and you can rematch up to three times in ranked or infinitely in casuals. So far so good, but then that's it. There are no other game modes, which also means there is no way to invite friends into battle. This is, simply put, unacceptable. It's bad enough that we have to fight for spectator modes and other basic features every time a new anime game comes out. If we're also gonna have to fight for something as simple as inviting friends to play with, it feels like we're moving backwards. I cannot overstate how bad this is, but we need to talk about some of the good stuff that the online has, because with that aside, I have very good news netcode wise. I just had one of the best experiences I've ever had with Arena Fighters. This is on par if not better than the My Hero Wants Justice netcode. I've run tests with folks from Europe and folks from America, including Afro Senju, who lives all the way in Miami. We played for well over over an hour in a Portugal to Miami connection and it felt like a stable 5 frame delay, which is to say you can feel the delay for sure, but it's consistent and not too bad. Now I will also say that I have praised netcodes before and then the game comes out, the servers get flooded with players and the wonderful netcode is suddenly horrible. There's no guessing what will happen once the game actually releases, so if you want my final thoughts on the netcode, you're gonna have to wait a few days after release. The truth is, they could open the servers on launch day and the game could look like this. This is what happened during a full day of testing, where I was playing someone from Hungary, and we just could not play each other. This is in the same region, so it should not be a problem. And it wasn't in any other day. We actually had some very good matches, but in this one specific day, it was impossible. So I've seen Storm Connections be the best netcode an arena fighter has ever had, and I've seen it be the worst netcode too. I hope this good side stays once the game launches, and not this awful side. We also tested Rage Quitting during a ranked match, and once we came back to the game, we got no message saying that quits would be punished, so I'm not sure if there are any repercussions for quitters, but the game certainly doesn't message you about them. Before you enter matchmaking, you can set some filters if you only want to play against people within the same region. There are no filters for connection quality, which is unfortunate since you cannot leave a match after you find an opponent. And you can also set a preference to play only in 60 FPS, which would mean that you only play against other PlayStation 5 players in this example, since the game runs at 30 FPS on PS4. If you find a PS4 player online, your game will also go down to 30 FPS, which might be a sacrifice you're willing to make in order to play with a bigger player base. That is completely up to you. Before you join matchmaking, you must also choose your team and stage, which is nice to remove the time that it takes to start a ranked match. And while waiting for an opponent, you can wait in practice mode or in free battle, which is also a welcome addition. I find the presentation of this game to be somewhat inconsistent. For the most part, it looks gorgeous at 4K 60fps, and even ignoring the blurry cutscenes that we talked about in history mode, some ultimates have this weird color scheme, like every color just becomes flat, something that maybe I'll get used to, but for now it's just jarring. Customization is a big selling point this time around, you can equip items you've unlocked in the collection on your characters, and that is how they will play in offline as well as online game modes. Customization goes even beyond this, you're able to customize what your online game mode looks like by by changing the background, the character, as well as the usual messages and titles on your player card. And for the first time, the game is voiced in a few more languages other than English and Japanese, which I'm sure is a big deal for those that grew up watching Naruto in their native tongue. And I'm gonna end this review with a chapter that I call The Promise. Now, this will not be taken into account when scoring this game, and to be honest, you can just wait and not buy the game to see if the promise gets fulfilled. But they have said that custom matchmaking will be added post-launch, so there will be a way to invite friends for sure. From what I know, it's gonna be a couple of months down the line, and if the netcode stays this good, once you can invite friends, this game is very easy for me to recommend. I do hope that friend invites also come with full lobbies, including spectator slots and all that good stuff that we need to run events, but the promise of Storm Connections goes beyond that. They're selling you a season pass and DLC characters, so it's expected that there will be balance patches and future updates fixing even more bugs. This is a Storm game they have built to last, and that's exciting from the series that popularized an entire genre. But promises aren't in the game yet, so we'll have to wait and see.
With all that said, it's time to score this game. And if you're new here, we use letters for our review scores from F, which is a bad game, all the way to A, which is very good. And this is my review for Naruto Storm Connections. Simply put, Storm Connections is lacking content. The special story is good, but not exactly mandatory, and that alone hardly justifies the full price tag. Only 10 new characters were added, history mode is awful, and no way to invite friends online is simply unacceptable. However, if your focus is to only play this game online, and this netcode stays this good post-launch, this is still an easy recommendation for me. Once you're able to invite friends, of course. This is one of those games that I would probably advise most people to wait before buying, to see if those promises come true, and so they can see how good the post-launch support is. I think launching like this will definitely hurt their sales a lot, but down the line, Connections has the potential to become the best Storm game ever released. Unfortunately, it's just not there yet. And that's my review for Storm Connections. I think this is one of those reviews that we'll definitely have to revisit at some point in the future, because right now, the game feels incomplete. But if you've had the chance to play it, let me know what you think of it in the comments down below. And for more anime games, check out my review for My Hero Ultra Rumble. Thanks for watching. Bye.